As someone that's been in freelance videography and filmmaking for the last little bit, one of the questions I hate the most is, how much you should charge. Now, the reason why is because it's gonna be incredibly different depending on the industry, depending on where you are in life, depending on your skill set, and a lot of things that are really hard for me to quantify because for the most part, I don't know you guys. But in today's video, I'm gonna talk about how you could start off with actually setting your own prices by a lot of things that you already know the answer to. We'll get into it. Now, the first thing you might wanna consider is how much your day rate is going to be, how much a day of your time is going to be worth. This is gonna be the foundation of a lot of things that you're going to be doing. And had I start this all over again, I think I would just have one solid day rate and build things up on top of that, rather than try to be as cheap as possible in some areas, which ends up just causing me a lot more stress. Now, the day rate can be determined by just finding out how much it would be if you had to miss a day of work at your nine to five job. Whatever that is going to be, if you had to call in sick to do that, shoot at the bare minimum you would make as much as a normal day of work now keep in mind over time this is going to go up and this isn't necessarily something that you want to stick at all of the time so if you make 200 bucks a day at your normal job well then your day rate is going to start off at 200 dollars, and you're going to add things like your equipment your experience knowledge all that other stuff later on but just know at the bare minimum at the very least when you're starting out if you're going on a shoot or you're editing a video at the bare minimum you're just going to lose a day of work at your normal job so you're not losing money on actually doing anything now speaking of starting off at a day rate and working your way up you're definitely going to have some equipment that you're going to need in order to do these video projects in the first place. So one thing you want to do is find out your entire kit, put everything together and find out how much it is to actually rent everything out. Now I'm using the Sony FX30 and I think in Canada it's around $200 if you want to rent one. And I'm not actually going to put $200 as the rental fee because I own the camera already, but it is a good thing to keep in mind and add that as a line item to add into your rate to shoot video projects. The reason why you want to do that is that you actually want to have a line item that could pay your camera back if something goes wrong with it. If you're only charging your day rate to shoot video projects, you're only covering your time. But if your camera breaks down, you're going to have to dip into that time that you spent actually making the videos in the first place to fix anything that might need to be repaired. This is something that a lot of people miss out on and hopes to actually be the cheapest option that's going to be out there. Now, we did talk about spec work before, and that's where you want to show your skill set to justify your price point. And once you are charging your client, you want to make sure you cover things like your equipment or something breaks, you're going to be screwed. In fact, when I first started out on like a Sony a6000, my camera broke, but I had only up until that point charged for my time. So when my camera broke, I had to dip into my money and struggle to pay rent in order to buy a new camera, a new lens, new batteries, and everything else I needed because the thing actually broke down, stopping from making work in the first place. Now, other things you want to consider, especially if you're going to be concepting videos, is charging for pre-production. If you're the person that's going to be looking for locations, looking for talent, and looking for all the other things to make the shoot come together, well, you're not only just somebody that's going to be filming it you're not just the cinematographer you're not just the director well now you're the producer as well and producers make a decent amount of money so you want to make sure that you're adding that in terms of the time that you actually spend making these video projects okay so the first line item that's going to probably go in your quote is going to be your pre-production the planning of the actual shoot that costs a little bit of your time now i'm going to admit i'm not really good at this topic so i decided to hand this over to someone who's a lot better hey everyone so so this is Nicole. She's actually produced a ton of times for me on different productions and different shoots. And uh, I'm just gonna hand the microphone over to her because she can explain pre-production and producing a lot more. So when I first started, I had no idea that I was supposed to be charging for what I was doing. I didn't realize that I was taking so much of my time to do all of the contracts, to have all of the meetings, all of the admin stuff. If you're location scouting, all of that stuff takes your time. So if you're starting out, I would ask yourself what you would make in a typical nine to five, and that becomes your day rate. If you are not so much in demand and you don't have a ton of like inbound clients coming to you, I would probably start there. And then from multiple you know, shoots and if you have more experience under your belt, then you can start increasing your price. So if you are just like a one man band, you definitely should incorporate this cost in your full quote as like a line item as like, I'm producing and this is how many days that it's going to take me to do all of these tasks and all of these tasks meaning the location scouting, finding cast or talent, any of the meetings, admin, that kind of stuff. Things like Ubers, things like parking, things like any kind of transportation, craft, so snacks on set, lunches, any meals. Any location rental costs, insurance is also another one that people sometimes don't account for. 
any other expendables that you incur, you have to communicate that to your client that it is not in the initial quote and you're adding that on later. So you're not incurring that cost yourself. Now, once you've planned out the entire video, you've shot the entire thing, and maybe you've brought in some extra hands to actually make things go smoothly, we're gonna talk about post-production and editing. Now, this is still going to satisfy under that day rate. At the very minimum, you're paying for your time. If it's gonna take you a day to edit a video, well, then you charge that time because if you have to miss work, at the very least, you wanna break even. But there's other things that you wanna keep in mind as well. Now, I have a bunch of different ways that I license music for my client projects, and I have to pay for those memberships in order to have that music to use in the first place, which also means that your client should be able to pay for that music licensing, and that should be a line item that's going to go in your post-production fees. At the end of the day, whether you're editing the video or they're doing it in-house, they're going to have to pay for that music license somehow. And whether it's you using your art list or your music bed membership in order to do that, you should have a line item that's going to actually charge for the music production you're going to use. Now, the same is going to be true with anything you're going to use from plugins or VFX. Those things should also be added into your price. It doesn't make a lot of sense that you have to pay for all the music licensing software, all the editing effects, and then at the same time, you're technically going to be losing money because you're only going to be paid what the time is to actually edit the video. Just like anything in terms of contract work, the labor and the materials are going to be separate because you're going to need the materials and you're going to need the labor. The two aren't going to be mutually exclusive. And if you don't have one, you definitely aren't going to get the work that needs both. Now let's go through an example. So say for example, you have to do a basic corporate shoot, but you do have to hire talent, you have to find location and it's out of town. So you have to pay for parking and you have to travel there as well. You're gonna be filming everything on the Sony FX30 on a basic package with a single lens and a microphone, and as well as you're gonna have some basic lighting with you as well to add into your kit. After everything is said and done and after you've shot for the full day, it's gonna take you about two days to edit this because you are gonna be making a video that's about two to three minutes long with some lower thirds titles, some copyrighted music, and just the regular stuff that you would see in a small business video. Now, I'm going to just kind of create an arbitrary day rate of $200 to base something off of, and I'm also going to talk about all the line items that I'm just gonna put over here because this video is pre-recorded before I make those numbers, and also, I don't wanna to have to go through the entire math with you. You'll probably leave the video. But on the side of the screen you're actually going to see what it would cost to be able to do a shoot just like that now this is going to be used as a starting point if you're having a little bit of turbulence in terms of pricing with your clients well you could do a couple of different things one i suggest negotiating on the work that's going to be done if your client doesn't want to pay your price in terms of a video well then you have a bunch of line items that you could remove and overall to make the price a little bit lower and if they don't want to lose those things then they're going to have to pay that cost to do that it works the same with buying anything else really another thing that you can do is if you want to make this a little bit easier to read and make it less intimidating is that you can combine some of these line items but still have them exist nonetheless one thing that I like doing, especially if I have a lot of things from pre-production, production, and post-production, is I just make those three things separate line items, but the description for them, I put more detail in terms of which one entails. Say, for example, post-production is going to cost, say, a thousand bucks, but no one really cares about the editing fees and the music licensing and the VFX and all that other stuff. They just assume that's going to be within the package. It's way easier to just make that a line item that's just going to be post-production, and then if you have things you need to cut back on, you could go into more detail, but for the most part, people understand things that happen happen before the shoot, the shoot itself, and stuff that happens after. Now, if you are in a corner and they need that stuff really, really bad, but they still can't afford it, well, then just try to get something out of it. Now, by get something out of it, I mean, like, as genuine as possible. Things that we talked about in the spec work video might include getting BTS, or maybe you have a sponsor on your channel that you can use in order to offset some of that cost, but also maintain a little bit more creative control. There's a variety of different ways that you can make client projects work for you that are outside of the price tag. At the end of the day, working as a creator, working as a filmmaker is all about mutual benefit. And sometimes that mutual benefit is content in exchange for money. Sometimes it's content in exchange for helping your business or whatever the case might be. But as long as that mutual benefit is equal, you avoid the rat race of doing a bunch of client projects that are underpaid and still not getting the content that you need out of it to make yourself grow. Now, a couple of things that I would recommend doing, and I might make another video about this if you really need one, is make sure that you get a deposit. One thing that I did not do when I was doing a lot of video when I first started out was I didn't get a deposit, which ends up being a pain in the butt because once I'm done the project, even if I don't deliver it to them, I still don't have any money and I might be waiting months for them to be able to do it. Also, what ends up happening is that once you lock somebody down into a deposit, it makes them more likely to actually show up. Now, in my entire career, I've only had two no-shows, and those people just had to accept the fact that they're taking an L on losing their deposit. 
Now, the threat or the worry of losing that money, especially if you're not going to show up to a shoot knowingly, is actually kind of high, and it sucks, and it's super inconvenient, which means that people are more likely to make the time to actually show up instead of leaving you high and dry at your location for three hours, which means that you're going to have to go home or make Instagram. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's over. It was years ago, but just make sure you get a deposit. Now, the second thing, and it kind of has nothing much to do with prices, but also make sure you have a contract for the same reason why you're going to have a deposit. You want to make sure that not only you're protecting yourself, but your clients are actually protecting themselves to make sure that you're doing the thing you say you're going to do, they're paying the thing that they're going to pay, and you're doing the content that you're going to do, and that you're going to deliver it the way that it's supposed to be. Without a contract, there isn't going to be much clarity in terms of what's supposed to be exchanged and what's supposed to be done. And at the very least, if there's ever a dispute, you can always go back to that contract and you could kind of tell people to eloquently uh, follow up with you later on. Now, some of you might ask, Kofi, what do you charge for your projects? Now, I'm gonna be completely honest, I hate answering this question, and I probably will somewhere in the comments or in a community post later on, or maybe going forward, I might just put the budget of the actual projects going forward. The reason why I don't have a general concept of what it costs for me to do projects is kind of twofold, especially when I share it on social media. Uh, the first thing is, well, it doesn't give you any context. I live in Toronto, which in the grand scheme of things isn't necessarily the entire world. Um, I freelance a little bit less than I used to, and I work in different scenarios in different industries. So it is kind of hard for me to be able to tell you one price that ultimately you're going to go and use as a scapegoat if things don't work your way. Unfortunately, I've had horror stories where I would tell somebody my day rate and they would use it as their day rate. And when it didn't work out, they would just blame me for it. So in order to avoid all of that, I don't know, just don't talk about it. Instead, I teach you how to figure it out yourself. But that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video or at the very least, you learned a little something about how to price your video production. Now, this isn't an end all be all and things are gonna change and vary based on your skill set, how far along you are, and also some of the equipment that you might have and also just where you are geographically in the industry that you're working with. But you can use this as a great starting point and you could start to learn and use a combination of some of the videos that have come out in order for you to figure it out for yourself.